What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. We're here with Ari Karlak, Astorian, and Gale, and we are right outside the swamps, pretty much over by Riverside Tea House. We can probably just teleport over here, but we didn't explore this little nook here, and I think we should before we head out. But let's look at the journal and read Auntie Ethel's quest, because, well, we have two of them, basically, for her. Save the refugees now. That's not it. It would be under find a cure. Get help from Auntie Ethel. We met an eccentric old lady in the Emerald Grove. She's confident she can remove our parasites and invited us to her tea house. <laughs> we're gonna let Auntie Ethel work on us? I don't I don't think we are. I just don't see it. Then we also have Save Myrina. We saw through the illusion that hid the area, revealing a stinking nightmarish place. It makes me wonder. <laughs> What would have happened if we didn't reveal the area? But check out Ari's armor. I took the time off camera and I used this die here on the armor. It's pretty easy, self-explanatory. I guess I could have just did it right there and there. You click on the armor, use, and then you just change it. Thing is, I don't know. Let's just do the cloak. We might as well do the cloak and see what happens. Oh, it made it like black and brown. That's pretty cool. I don't know where we got this die from. Just our looting escapade. Ari kind of looks awesome now. Everything matches for once. So the die system is is pretty awesome. And it's like I said, it's really easy. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a big of an ordeal. We had to go to something specifically and use it. But we can just die it. Does It, it makes me wonder if you can die weapons as well wait combine I mean what are we gonna do everything else pretty much matches what if we do the loot <laughs> I think we can let's see invalid combination okay so you can't do weapons and such that's fine I think Ari looks good we don't need the helmet done because we're not really Showing the helmet, but let's go. Let's head into the swamps. See what we can pick up. See what we can do. Potatoes. We got potatoes over here, friends. She's just leaving all this trash out here for us to pick up. I want to check out Astorian in the thief spec. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's nothing else over there. <laughs> And then I also am looking forward to checking out Gale. Carlac, well, she's... She's just a barb. <laughs> and we've pretty much been using her a lot, though. But I like it because it gives us a chance to see the other barbs that I probably don't ever plan on playing. What the hell? Should we talk and deal with these guys? Should we fight them? I think we're going to leave them where they are for now. We'll leave them where they are for now, but they were pretty much responsible for killing these gentlemen. Here. I would imagine that anti ethyl stuff had something to do with it as well. Ah! My finger! Probably shouldn't have did that. Creature has recently cut itself. Oh, my finger. You gotta figure because they were eating the apples as well. Thing is, if you think about it, they came into the swamps and they probably seen these guys as lambs or whatever they were acting as because they didn't dispel the illusion. All right, well, let's just keep on going. Let's keep on walking around and seeing what we can fucking find in here. We got to be careful, of course, because you never know what the hell is going to happen. I kind of want to go over here, but I kind of don't want to get the whole crew over here. There's a frog over there. As long as we don't get the whole crew in the water, maybe, I think we'll, we'll be fine. Hold on. So this is an area. That's the upper part. But there is crates and chests over here. Are you hurting, or... What's happening? This flesh is rotting. Let's get Ari... Despite everything. Out. Shovel out as well, going. and just use Ari and jump across this stuff. 
See, because he's going to jump in the fucking water, sadly. This might be the best thing, is just to take one person and jump. Uh, you mother effer, you ran in the water. You could have jumped across that thing. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, bait. They baited us. Traveler's chest. Gonna go in the water. And jump across. Let's just get the traveler's chest. Gold and an emerald. What is that? Well, we're, we're, our flesh is rotten, but we're not really taking any damage. Let's get everyone back in the party here. And then I think we should go and talk to this frog. <laughs> Let's go and say hi to the frog. We got animal speed going, yeah? We... We do. Hey, frog. Green leaves, shallow water. Green leaves, shallow water. Green leaves and shallow water. What is this place? Why is it covered by an illusion? Looking for Auntie Ethel, know her? Should we just ask them? Her? What is this place? Why is it covered in illusion? Bad. Away. What are you croaking on about? Green water. A chill runs up your spine. There is something wrong with this creature. Very wrong. Burn. Bleed. Kill. Kill me. You're the size of a boot sole. Perhaps I should go. What's wrong? What is it? <laughs> we about to fight this frog. What's wrong? What is it? Perhaps I should go. Green leaves, shallow water. Green leaves, shallow water. Wait, what? I reflective mucus. Bro, you can fucking throw this thing. What's the reflective mucus? Reflective mucus. Armor class is increased by two and reflects the first projectile flying toward it back at the attacker. After which the mucus is removed. 25 health for this frog. Let's not kill this frog. The frog is definitely. Something's going on with the frog here. She said shallow water, green leaves. Maybe she's... Oh, this is crazy. Well, maybe the frog is... Well, I don't know. Obviously, the swamps is... Hurting the frog in some way, some somehow. But I always keep thinking. Well, always. The way I'm thinking right now is Auntie Ethel has so much power that she is. Well, she's obviously controlling the illusion of the bog, whatever it is. But it makes me wonder if she can fling curses as well. Because it seems like she probably can. We picked up a bone. Oh. This is probably Auntie Ethel's house, friends. There's a well here. This is going to lead us right back down to the fellas. Wait, who the fuck are you? See that guy? Gandrel? Sir, what you, what you got going on here? Arya still flesh is fucking rotten. Look at that over there. We have something in vines. Purple. Well, I don't even know if that's vines. That's something in purple. You see Auntie Ethel anywhere? There she is. She's inside that place. Oh, hell. She's in there baking up something, and you just know it. 
Let's talk to this gentleman. Fucking Ari's flesh is still rotten. Flesh is decaying, disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws. Using charisma, vulnerability to all damage, deceased. Diseased. Well, how are we supposed to get rid of that? Just let it rot off? Let it go off? That seems to be like the only way to possibly get rid of that stuff. Let's talk to this gentleman. Let's be on my way. Ah. Wait, I still look at Ari, he's just bleeding it up, friends. He's tore up. Hey, Gandrel. Ah, stranger. Forgive the aroma. You catch a waft of something foul, metallic, and sickly sweet. Powdered iron vine. An old hunter's trick. But most monsters will think twice before making a meal of me. You're a monster hunter. I'm surprised. I thought all girl were vagrant cutthroats. Say nothing. Harden, but who or what is a gur? I knew you were a jackass, but racist? I'm shocked. Well, we don't know what a gur is. An historian. <laughs> I kind of want to say nothing because historian just jumped in here and see if he said something else. Ignore the elf. He talks too much. No, I mean, he does talk. But we love it when he talks. Let's just say nothing. And more. We steal chickens, curse your crops, seduce your daughters, the list goes on. Now, I wish I had half the power settled folk think my people possess. Alas, I am a simple wanderer. A simple wanderer and monster hunter. But I'm no witch doctor or cutthroat. So what monster are you hunting? If I were a cutthroat, I wouldn't admit it either. No, I, I guess I wouldn't admit it if we were a cutthroat. I mean, we're kind of like a swindler, are we not? I mean, we pretty much rob everyone, but we're a good guy. You sure the fuck are? What monster are you hunting? Something terrifying, no doubt. Dragon? Cyclops? Kobold? Nothing so dramatic. I'm hunting for a vampire spawn. His name is Astarian, but I fear he's gone to ground. I hope the hag of these lands can help me flush him out, if I can afford her blood price. Oh, fucking hell, this guy is hunting Astorian, so wait. What happens if we didn't even bring Astorian here? Does this guy not even spawn down here? What the hell? And when you find this Astorian, you'll kill him? Only a spawn? Pity, not like it's a real vampire. Time for us to go, good luck on your quest. Well, here he is, this is Astorian, we can just give him up. Hey, this is Astorian right here! Look at him! <laughs> and when you find this Astorian, you'll kill him. Not this time. My orders are to capture him. Oh. Uh, and bring him where, exactly? Baldur's Gate. My people wait for me there. Only a spawn. Pity. Not like it's a real vampire. I feel like this is going to offend Astorian, but I kind of want to say it because he'll probably be funny about it. I don't know. I'm sure a vampire spawn could still rip out your throat if he felt like it. He is right, unfortunately. They are only weak when compared to their masters. During the day, we have the advantage. But at night, when they hunt, you'll not find a more deadly quarry. You never met a story with a tadpole in its head. <laughs> because the tadpole is allowing him basically what? To walk around the sun like it's nothing? Yes, I'm sure they can creep right up on you. Interesting, Astorian, what do you think? I don't think we should say this. We're just gonna say his name out loud. Thank you for the warning, we'll be careful. Yes, I'm sure they can just creep right up on you. We've all survived so far. Let's focus on that. It would still be wise to post guards at night. The threat is real. Indeed it is. We should do something about this threat. All right, kill him if you must. We'll be careful, but we should get going. Are we gonna let a story and just kill him? See, this guy is hunting one of our dear friends, and it's something that we probably shouldn't like. Well, we don't like. But do we just let a story and kill him? What if we show him a different path and don't have him kill him? I'd imagine that he's probably not gonna like it. But what if we do it? It's almost like you're a bigger person to walk away, but then again, you still have this threat that you know about that's gonna be on your tail. 
Maybe if we nip it in a button now, it's done and over with. Kill him if you must. We'll be careful. I think we should just be careful and go. Like, I want to get rid of this guy because I don't want nothing to happen to Astorian. But also, I want to show Astorian another path. Yeah, we're going to let him just eat our... Take our blood every now and again, of course, if he needs to. But we don't want him to go... I just feel like a, like he'd be a bigger person if he walked away from it. We don't know the whole story behind it right now. Fully. Why they even want to hunt him. I mean, he said a little bit, but it wasn't that much that we know. Let's just be careful. But we should get going. Wait, that's it. We're just walking away. Do whatever you want. Fine, this is a story in the vampire spawn. I said we'll be careful. Now let's go. Do whatever you want. We're gonna let him do whatever he wants. I think I still want to go with the theory that if we walk away, is the bigger person. You're the bigger person for walking away? We could change him. Because we don't want him going down a dark path and just killing and killing. But this guy is straight up fucking hunting him. But that's different, you know what I mean? If someone was hunting one of my loved ones, I think I would want to take him out too. But then again, I don't know, because you don't always want to go down that dark path of just killing people. <laughs> I mean, that's a terrible path. Oh, but this guy is trying to kill a Starian, though. Oh, I don't know, this is kind of tough. Parts of me wants to just walk away and see if it changes a Starian. Let's just walk away. But what I'm meaning is changing him for the better. Astorian's pretty awesome as it is now. We don't really even need to change him. It's not like he's going on a killing spree. I mean, if anyone's going on a killing spree, it's us, Mr. Urge himself. But let's not have him go down that dark path, too. I said we'll be careful. Now let's go. Fine. But if this comes back to bite us, it's on your head. Go in peace, my friends. I pray our paths cross again. They better bloody not. The historian did not like that. Maybe we should look at the, um... Let's look at the approval stuff right now, because... Astarian is... Relationship is fair. Is there a number? Anywhere showing? Because this bar, a simple number would be great. Gotta be a number somewhere. Approval, medium, 39. Carlac. Approval is 24 for a Starian. Gale is 38. Damn, they're actually pretty awesome. We should go look into camp and see whose approval isn't that high, and we should take him with us. Carlac is is pretty is medium, medium, and a Starian's medium too. So a Starian didn't uh, disapprove by that much. I don't know. I just feel like it was a better. Hey, look at Xanthi Ethel. I don't know, friends. I felt like that might have been the better call. Just maybe walk away from it. See what happens. We could try to steal from him with a story. Flesh rot saved. Look at his fucking bow on his back, though. I bet you if we fought him, we could have got that. Okay, don't I'm gonna touch me. <laughs> don't touch me. Leave no trace. I'm gonna get on with a story and see if we can pickpocket this fella. See if he has anything to pickpocket. That is. Look at shovel. She's right to whoop his ass. He's got some potions. We can steal some potions from him. He don't really have anything. Garlic. Let's not take his potions. Because I don't want to teleport from the area. I don't really want to rouse him. So this guy is hunting a Starian. What the hell? And we just let it go. We really gonna just let it go? Did anything come up in the journal? Nothing. What Once happens if we talk to him ends, again? Not as if we talk to him ever. again, you think he'll... I don't know, man. This is tough. You tracked me down again, my friend. Would that I had as much luck with the beast I'm hunting. I haven't even moved, my friend. I like the trade. Oh, we can trade! Okay. Here, you want this bone? I want to give you that. We can buy his potions. We don't need to buy his potions. May your road be kind. May your road be kind. Damn, friends, I don't really know what to do with them. I'm kind of just going to sit on it. 
I guess we could probably just wait and then come back. See, because like, I'm feeling some type of way right now because I want to off this guy to keep Astorian safe. But I also want to walk away as the bigger person and don't kill him. But he's straight up trying to kill Astarian. How do you how do you walk away from that? And we're kind of just walking away from that. <laughs> so it makes it kind of tough here, man. You figure some kind of quest would update in the journal with that for Astarian, right? I mean, well, letter from M. We just gonna walk up into her house. She ain't gonna be happy. Oh shit! Oh. I don't want a crumb <laughs> left on that plate, girl. Auntie Ethel, please. One more bite, and this pie is gonna come back up to say hello. Don't make me get the wooden spoon. You're eating for two, so get to it. If it isn't the cheekiest pop of them all, you'd best have one hells of an apology for me, young man. <laughs> Barbarian or what? You must have mistaken me for somebody else. <laughs> We're just gonna say that? Or what? Should we barbarian her ass? Andy Ethel, you got some shit going on here. A lot of shit going on here. Let's barbarian her How ass. How shocking. Another barbarian with all brawn and no brains. You know, I was gonna give you a swift kick up the arse and show you the door, but I think you and I could have a bit of fun together. Gods grant me patience. Eat up, Marina. I won't say it again. Maybe she's not hungry, Ethel. That's Marina. I have some bad news for her. The lady doesn't seem to enjoy her dinner, Ethel. You treat all your guests so poorly. You said you had something for the parasite. Let's not ask about the parasite. That's Marina. I have some bad news for her. Should we tell her about the bad news about her brothers right in front of Ethel? Yeah, Ethel might have killed your brothers. Or the goats out there, whatever they are. That's Marina. Let's tell her about the bad news. Keep that hole under your nose shut. Or things will get messy. The choice is yours. There's really no good decision to be made here. What is it? What's going on? Auntie Ethel killed your brothers. I believe she killed your- We're just gonna tell her right in front of Ethel. The choice is yours, he says, Gail. <laughs> Fuck it. Hey, Ethel, I'm throwing you under the bus because I feel like- Look at this meal here. Is that worms on there? Leaves? Tree branch? Tree bark? What was that? Auntie Ethel killed your brothers. That can't be true. Auntie Ethel. They were being rude, and I detest rudeness. You monster! The deal is off! Enough! Away with you! Blessed silence at last! Some time in the cage should do her good. And you! You'll regret sticking your nose in my business. Oh no. We just gonna fight Ethel? Chomp, chomp! <laughs> Fucking hell, save Marina. Get help from Auntie Ethel. Wait, the little guys are on board now. Friends, we... <laughs> we didn't even start any conversations. Like, okay, we got the little guys on board. Damn it. Let me look at the journal here. Get help from Auntie Ethel. Things turned out violent with Auntie Ethel. She isn't happy with us. <laughs> Save Marina. Auntie Ethel waved her hand and Marina vanished. What happened to her? I don't know. Well, hey Ethel, whose turn is it? Astorian's turn. 
We can work on Ethel. Should we go bite her? Let's go bite her ass. Where the hell is she? Where's she at? Ethel, where'd you go? Where the fuck did Ethel go? Unless we're not fighting Ethel right now. Oh, she... Hold on. Let me... I don't think we're fighting Ethel. I think she done vanished too. Oh, she's invisible. That's what's going on here. Okay. Well, Astorian, you got an advantage on these fellas? No. Let's get some high ground somewhere. Can we reach this top here with Astorian? Is it possible to jump up on the roof? Probably not. Well, we could work on a story in probably. What if we cutting dash to this rock? Can we get up on this rock and at least get some kind of high ground? We can get on this rock with a story in and then work on. These ones are gonna come in here. We'll get a story in over here Quick. first. Okay. He's got the high ground for sure now. And then let's cunning. Let's find some pride. They're too far, which is fine. I mean, I knew we were, they were going to be too far away anyway. I guess what we can do is let's take some potions, poisons. No, we don't have any. Shit. All right, Astorians in a good spot. Let's pass. Shovel. Let's go in here and see if we, see if we can reveal anti Ethel. She's in stealth somewhere. Go invisible, though. Survival is all that matters. Okay. Drow magic, fairy fire. All targets within a light turn visible. Let's see. Where the fuck are you at, Ethel? She's invisible. Hmm. Doesn't show her here. Is it going to show her though? She might be right here. I don't think that did anything. She's invisible for 10 turns. Not good. Okay. What we can do is this. How, what's this range now? Let's pass. All right, Gail, what can you do, my friend? We can do some daggers up on their asses. They're gonna have to come right through the daggers. Oh, they're fucking screwed. Oh, that's so good, Gail. Daggers is awesome. And then with Gail, maybe we should go back just a little bit more. And we'll hold the door with Carlac. Hey, Carlac, how are you? For now, I kind of want to rage on Carlac, but do an extra one and two and set your target on fire. Legacy of Avernus, Searing Smite. Has she always had this? I don't feel like she always had that spell, right? Where is the one that pulls them towards us? Let's just brace for range, all right? And then we'll just range attack from here because I kind of want to get them. We got a disadvantage. Oh, there's the snare. This is the pool. Do you have any kind of a bomb you can throw? No, nothing. Damn. Hamstring shot? Let's hamstring his ass. We hamstrung one of them. All right, we'll hold the door right here. Hell. Come on in. Oh, they held her. Daggers really jacked them guys up, though. Down here. 
were we were close. Enjoy yeah. playing with your new friends. Bye bye. Where the hell you going, Ethel? Your turn. Hey, historian, how are you? Save Marina. What happened? Auntie Ethel, the green. Oh, she's a green hag. Disappeared through her fireplace. If we follow her, perhaps we'll find Marina. Auntie Ethel waved her hand and Marina vanished. What happened to her? Okay, let's work on these guys. A hey, historian. You don't have the range. They're not fucking in range. Damn it. So we wasted our turn with a historian. Can we not go over here? Is it possible to jump over here? No, we can't get on that. Can we get on this bag of bones? We might be able to hit this one here. Just not fucking far enough. This way. That's unfortunate, man. I guess we can jump. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Damn, friends, I fucking suck with rogue stuff. Let's see if we can hit this one. 16! That works. Offhand. But that's daggers. Offhand arrow. 70%. Hey, that works. Are we still hidden? I don't think we are. No, we're not hidden. Shovo! Don't whoop his ass. Ooh, good hit. No choice but to keep going. Hey Ari, you think it's time to rage? Do we rage out here? I don't want to rage yet. We got this in snare. As a bonus action. We can ensnare it's a 30% chance to ensnare him though. Yeah, but what does the ensnare do? Your attack summons thorny vines that possibly ensnare the target, but let's see what ensnare does. Self-explanatory, honestly. Cannot move and takes one to six piercing damage per turn. I don't think we need to ensnare this guy. Maybe if one of them tries to run away. Let's just work on, I don't want to rage either. I feel like we're gonna wipe these guys out here. Pretty easily. I want to save our rage. We probably don't need to save our rage. But for now, let's save. Astorian saved it, mother effer. Damn it. So much for hiding with Astorian. Well. Ray of Frost. Let's write 56%. I guess we can magic missile his ass to try to help Astorian. Take that, you son of a gun. He's almost dead. Don't do anything with him, Gale. Stay there in the doorway. I think that's a pretty good spot. I'm starting to save in all these wounds. Damn, that was a beast of a hit on Carlac. I need your help. Fucking killed her. Let's go bite him. You happy, Astorian? No. Can't do that, obviously. I guess we can just attack him, 80%. Good on you, Astorian. So, we can't hide right now. I guess we can get him up here. Try to get Karlak up. Damn, Karlak got destroyed, friends. What the fuck? Let's hit this one. Blood comes easy these days. We need to get Karlak up. We can't reach this destination, though. We got the rage. These guys were way harder than I thought. We missed. We missed again. No. That is not Don't good, man. Leave. Yale, you're kind of like the only one that can do anything right now, and I can't do anything yet because, well, I guess I can throw on this guy. It's a concentration spell. We need to break the daggers. How do we break the daggers? Alright, we broke the daggers. 
Cannot be cast outside of combat. Oh, can only be cast outside of combat, I got. Scorching Ray. 42, 42. That's not gonna work. We can do Tasha's. What about Poison Spray? No. Get him to go to sleep. No target. Wait. Too many hit points, too many hit points. Too many hit points. I gotcha. We can do Tasha's hideous laughter. <laughs> you hear him? How you like that, you son of a bitch? Go ahead, Gale. Push his ass. <laughs> Athletics was successful. Just don't hit Carlock because she's down for the count, I think. You ain't got nothing on Astarian. He's just saving all that shit. That guy is fucking wrecking us. What did she say? <laughs> we had a 60% on this one. Let's hit this one. 15, that's something. We got this one over here. And this one, what's his health looking like? If they get into melee, he's only at 8. If they get into melee, they're hurting us. Concentration saved. Whose turn is it? Oh, Shovel's turn. Damn, Shovel's beast mode. Poor Carlag is just wrecked. To catch my breath. Ari, whoop his ass, sir. Just two. What if we pick his ass up and throw him into this one? Fuck. That was terrible, Ari. That didn't work out at all. That was a waste of a turn, friends, huh? That was only a 30% chance. I should have known. Let's hit this one. This one. Actually, let's cancel. How do you cancel it? Okay. We will hit magic missiles on this one. Two on that one. We got one. Oh, we got two. Nice, Gale. Good hit, my friend. You want to push this guy again? Can you? Take that and love it. Rage ended. Our, both of our fucking teams just got wrecked. Our rage ended. We didn't even... God damn it. All right. Is it because we missed? We just weren't getting hit? Damn it, friends. I'm not gonna rage again. That was such a waste of rage. We can get Karlak up, or we can just keep working on this guy before he kills more people. Let's keep working on him. And then... Another attack. He's going to hit Ari. We should have killed them out there. Instead of fighting him here. Shovel! Yes! No time to rest. Let's get Gale up. Carlac. That could have went better. That was a really, really bad fight on my part. It was really dumb. I thought a Starion would be. See, this. That's the thing. Rogues are tough, man. You take them over here just to fucking get the advantage of the high ground. But it leaves him out in the open. Everybody was just hitting him, but he was just saving everything like a boss. And, well, <laughs> we see what happened. Nothing but. hurts anymore. Hell, man, that was rough. All right, time to see what new horrors waiting for us. You think? I kind of want a long rest again, but I don't. She went through what the fireplace it said. We should look around in our house, though. We just straight up told her that... What's weed? We just straight up told Is her that... Bad? No, never mind. <laughs> Auntie Ethel killed it. I mean, if you think about it, these guys were working for Ethel. So 
so I guess she did, in a sense, indirectly kill them guys. Look, we could probably go down the well over here. I'd imagine. I don't exactly want to do that yet. We have all types of shit over here. Let's jump up. It looks like we have... What is that? Arcane barrier? There's an arcane barrier over there. On a tomb. Why? Hey, Karlak, how are you? Let's get everybody else in here. Quite ready for you with ease. In case we pick up something and they have dialogue for it. Well, we told Marina. <laughs> I still don't know if that was a good call because we probably should have dug more before we said something about my mind. Hey, Ari. Huh? Well, about anti Ethel killing because I mean she didn't fully kill him, but yes, I feel like she had it in a way. I mean she's a green hag. Oh, we we suspected it, but it was true. Let's take this shit. And who cares now? Toad teapot. Antidote. She's not here to tell us or disapprove of it. Letter from M. The letter begins in an elegant cursive, but ends in a harsh sloping scroll. Ethel, forces are at work in Baldur's Gate. The mewling wretches are trying to edge me out of my own territory. I've killed at least four of their agents. None have talked, not yet at least. I doubt you hear anything beyond the bleeding of your ridiculous sheep. But if you can catch even a whisper, send word immediately M. Is this... Okay, so it's definitely not Marina, right? This M. Let's take this. The M is the same person that we read in the one of these notes at some point as well. There was a note that was talking about M. It was... I feel, I feel like it was something with the goblins, was it not? It was in the Blighted Village, I think. But anyways, there was somebody named M that is in charge of something going on here. Some kind of actions. Obviously, this M person has something to do with Ethel. Are we going to take all this shit? I guess we are. Auntie Ethel has had food. Since we done stole her out of house at home. <laughs> Our old tea house. Simple poison recipe. Wait, excuse me. We have a toll house key. Dagger root. Ari's just taking everything Ethel has. <laughs> I mean, she's a hag. I don't think she's going to play nice, but hey, it seems like a lot of people wanting to deal with Ethel. So the other guy wants to deal with Ethel. And now we got Marina that's dealing with Ethel as well for some reason. Copper ring. Ocean of healing. Ethel has so much healing stuff everywhere. Well, I don't really want to go through the fireplace at the moment. I want to go see what this fucking... I want to go see what this damn... Brood chest? Can you get in there? Yeah, she went right through the fireplace. Necklace and gold. <laughs> it's funny that we can just take everything, though. I mean, it's all red right now. Like, we're stealing it. Like, oh, well, we're obviously stealing it. But she's clearly an enemy right now. Spoiled. Something. Ocean of Animal Speak. Alright, so we already went up to this one. Hold on. We got another book here. Mistress of the Night friends. There was once a beautiful woman, men and women alike, traveled across the land to earn her hand in marriage, but none could win her heart. Her mother despaired, for she wished for her daughter to find love and happiness, and then her mother died. The woman cried and cried, her suitors stopped calling, her friends stopped writing, and still she cried. 
You poor child, Char whispered in her ear. They only wanted you for your beauty, for your charm, for your grace. Now that grief has replaced your charms, none care for you, none but I. The woman spoke to Char, who listened. She prayed to Char, who answered. For the first time in her life, the woman had a true friend. And then Char asked her to take a vial, a small vial, an innocent vial. She took the vial to a man. The man filled it with liquid and told her to drop it into a well. The woman did. She wanted Char to love her, to be proud of her. And then people became sick, people died, but Char loved her, and the woman loved Char. Now men and women alike travel across the land to see her, not because she is beautiful, not because she is charming, because she is a priest of Shar, and her word is law. Whoa. That doesn't sound good. There's some stuff on Shar, friends. <laughs> it does not sound good. Whatsoever. Look at all these greater healing potions, it's so great. I was thinking that we would have to, like, craft potions. We would need the craft potions. But it doesn't seem like we're going to have to do that because we done picked up so much potions. I don't think we looted this red cap here. Thanks for the gold. One copper. One gold. Can we go over to... How the fuck do we get to this area here? There has to be no way. There's no way... You can't... We obviously can't swim. I don't think we can swim. How the hell... Unless we go... No, that's not gonna work either. Out this door. Yeah, there's a door right here. Sneaky, Ethel. We can bust this door open, probably. Gnarled Tea House. She was so nice and hospitable, kinda, and we just wrecked her. Who needs that door? Talking about Ethel. She was so nice and stuff inside the grove, and now we just came to her domain. We obviously probably should not touch that. Is there anything else in the area? One day I'll catch a break. One day we'll catch a break. <clears throat> Nothing else in the area. Yeah, we definitely shouldn't touch that. It's some kind of barrier for some damn reason. Ethel was doing something here. Is Ethel in there? Like, the real Ethel and this hag kind of takes over her body? Is that how it works? It probably doesn't work like that, I'd imagine. And there's just water. I don't think we should just go out in that. Okay, so there's nothing over here. We need to keep this in mind. And maybe we should go deal with Ethel first. And then possibly come back. Because I'd imagine... I'm not touching that thing. <coughs> Definitely not touching that. Let's go through the fireplace and see what happens. We done looted Ethel's place. Clean. Fireplace. Ah, how you like that, Ethel? Give me this teapot. Just walk straight through the fucking fireplace. I think we should rest again. Because if we're gonna... Oh, enough sitting around. Let's go hurt someone. Let's go hurt someone. If we're gonna have to fight Ethel... We're probably going to be fucking hurting. Overgrown tunnel. Away, away. Don't look. Don't. Wait, Gail. Arcane of hunger. Gail, you hurting? I've sent you a bunch of stuff, so you should here. be okay. My condition is worsening again. I need to consume some powerful magic or it may become volatile. Okay, give Gale an artifact. Persuade. I can't help now. Let's just give another artifact. What do you have, Gale? I gave you a bunch of stuff already. Why, why, don't, why can't you use your shit? 
Dragon's Grasp? We're not going to use Dragon's Grasp anyway. Silver Pendant? No. Absolutely not. I mean, we have stuff that we can give up. We can give up the Poisoner's Robes. Robes of Summer. Let's give up Robes of Summer. There you go, Gail. Thank you. It is a strange experience. Each time anew, I can Lost soul is spelunking through the darkness that is me, only to be sacrificed on the dread altar of the heart. Somehow the second artifact hasn't had the effect of the first. It somewhat relieved the discomfort, but I fear my hunger hasn't quite... Ah! Gail, what is happening? Are you alright? Is there anything I can do to help you? Let's ask him if we can... Please tell me we didn't just waste the magical. Oh, well, I don't really care about the. Ar Some of the armor is just we're just gonna sell it. I mean, give it to him, it's fine. Y'all right? Is there anything I can do to help? You do plenty for me, more than you realize. But this cannot be remedied. <clears throat> the magic isn't having the effect it should have. It's not like the last time, like a rainstorm that quells a forest fire and merely drizzles. The embers still sizzle, the fire remains undefeated. I'm not certain what's going on, but nothing good. Please, I need to think. I need to retrace my steps to a glade of calm and think. Thank you for the artifact. A great deal of trouble it was, too. A great deal of trouble, indeed. Hang in there, Gail. It sounds like something is going on more than what meets the eye for Gail. Obviously, I mean, we... It's fucking obvious, but it's almost like he has something inside of him, something, someone inside of him that he is just feeding. It's like, okay, so let's just speculate here. Let's speculate a bit. Maybe Gale, look, it's all red in here. Maybe Gale is, is binding someone to him, some dangerous being, and he's binding it to him, like, containing it, basically. Because it was such a horrible evil that if he lets loose, it would just destroy the world, in a sense. But he's fighting this and binding this evil to him to lock it away. Makes sense? And these artifacts are kind of sustaining him? Maybe? I've been in more unsettling places than this, but not many. So, there's a monster hunter after you? So it would seem. Hopefully he bumps into some gnolls while stumbling around at night, and that's the last we hear from him. But why was he hunting you? What did you do? What if he reappears? The next time someone comes looking for you, you're on your own. Yeah, but why was he hunting... Why was he hunting you? I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. Cazador? And who is Cazador exactly? I was, when we were out there, I was like, why didn't it come up in the quest? Duh, just talk to him, you big goof. <laughs> we should have talked to him immediately afterwards, but I mean, it's fine. Better late than never that we didn't go in here and pursue more things and miss this stuff. And who is Cazador exactly? Cazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven, and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. Man, that's crazy. You're sure Cazador's behind this? Obviously. If Astorian is his spawn, you think that the vampire and the spawn are on a, like a different level? They're kind of connected to each other? Like, I wouldn't say intimately, but I would say like, it's hard to explain. Almost like um, like a family thing in a sense. You turn someone to a spawn, you have this connection with that vampire, you know? And maybe he'll never let you go, of course, but he wants you back. 
Well, everyone wants to be free, and of course Historian wants to be free, I'd imagine. You sure Kassadar's behind us? It makes sense. You sure he's behind us, though? It was him, I'm sure. Only he would know to send the Gur after me. It was a group of Gur that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died had Kazador not appeared and saved me. So the Gur is what that monster hunter guy is. I mean, he said it. Saved you by turning you into a vampire slave? Well, he did do that, Astarian. You can't hold every Gur responsible for what happened to you? No, you probably can't. So why send one after you now to remind you of that night? Yeah. He appeared just when you needed him. Sounds convenient. Why would Monster Hunter serve Kazador? He's a vampire. I kind of want to say saved you by turning you into a vampire slave and see what he says. Well, he didn't mention the slave clause at the time. And now he sends a Gur Monster Hunter for me. It's a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. But why capture you? Why not just kill you? How concerned should we be? Don't worry, you're safe with me. Astorian. You gotta worry a little bit. But I would say if you're safe with anybody, it's going to be us. <laughs> safe! You think I'm safe? Do you know the power a vampire lord possesses? He can change shape, turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. All right, what do you suggest? Can he do that? Just walk into our camp? Vampires aren't invincible. We could take him. Well, let's ask them what he suggests then. Since he might have more knowledge than us. We don't have any knowledge besides just straight up fighting him. First, we have to... Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> if we kill his lackeys, he'll just send more. We just have to be vigilant. Keep our wits about us. And kill any monster hunters on sight. Yeah, but what if we just don't kill Monster Hunters on site, right? And we get the Monster Hunters to turn up, turn against him. What do you make of Raphael's deal? Wait, this is completely different than what we were just talking about. Yeah, what, what do you make of Raphael's deal? I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole... Kazador has control of me, body and soul, and I return to the shadows. It's grim either way, so why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it than Kazador. Wait, am I missing something here with Astorian and Raphael? Because Raphael only told us about getting rid of the tadpole, but... I mean, in Astarian's case, why the hell would you want to get rid of the tadpole? I don't think you... I don't know. I don't know if I would want to get rid of the tadpole then. In Astarian's case, friends. We have other options. Better options? I understand the appeal. You're trading one master for another. You'll be a slave either way. We do have other options. But you will be trading one master for another. You'll be a slave You're away. familiar with the phrase, better the devil you know. I know, Kazador. And I'll take anything that saves me from that. Yeah, but what does this have to do with Raphael? Like, are we missing something here? Did Raphael tell him that he would fucking get rid of this Kazador? Because we definitely didn't hear anything like that. Or maybe he's just talking about the tadpole, getting rid of the tadpole. Yeah, getting rid of the tadpole doesn't seem like it's a great idea for a story at the moment. Right? Anything else? I suppose you want to hear about Kazador. Yeah. You said he was your master. We're just in Ethel's cave just bullshitting with our companions. No, not really. Maybe we should have went back to camp here 
and then start Ethel's next. <laughs> because go by the cat would have been. It don't matter. You said he was your master. You don't have to tell me anything you don't want to. Well, you said he was your master. My old master. Before the mind flayers took me from him. Before this strange, twisted freedom. Kazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. Not political power or military power. I mean power over people. The power to control them completely. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. So you were his slave. How were you turned? Did he attack you? Tormentor? What do you do? Yeah, well he told us that he was pretty much saved from the Gurs. But I do want to ask. Did he attack you? Not him, no. A gang of thugs attacked me. Angry about a ruling that I'd handed down as magistrate. They beat me to death's door when Cazador appeared. He chased them off and offered to save me, to give me eternal life. Given that my choices were eternal life or bleed to death on the street, I took him up on the offer. It was only afterwards I realized just how long eternity could be. You've been a slave ever since. God, good grief, Astarian. Not a good master, I take it. Enough. I need to talk about something else. You've been a slave ever since? A vampire's spawn is less than a slave. They're a puppet. We have no choice but to obey our master's commands. They speak, and our bodies react. It's all part of the deal. Sometimes he'd order us to submit to torture. Sometimes he'd have us torture ourselves. Whatever his weather vain mood settled on. That doesn't sound good. Sounds terrible, I'm so sorry. You're free now, enjoy the freedom. Quite the sob story, but what's your point? I mean, I want to say I'm sorry, it sounds terrible. Because it does sound terrible. Could you imagine just doing that shit? Being in his position? It sounds fucking terrible. You're free now, enjoy that freedom. He's not free. He's not fully free yet. I feel like he's not going to be free until Cazador is dealt with. Sorry. That sounds terrible. Thank you. But this isn't about sympathy. It's about knowing what we might be up against. The Mind Flayers aren't the only monsters out there. They're not even the only ones hunting us. All I'm asking is that you keep your eyes open and watch out for anything lurking in the shadows. I'll watch your back, don't worry. You keep me safe and I'll do the same. Oh no, my friend. If vampires come looking for you, you're on your own. <laughs> the shit that you can say in this game is so fucking crazy. I'll watch your back, don't worry. What more could I ask? Now is that all? If you got more to say, I want to hear it all. <laughs> Anything else, Astarian? Well, hello. What can I do for you? Oh. Gail! Careful where you tread here. A hag's magic is not to be trifled with. I hear you. I think I have a magical artifact you're interested in. Nope. Hey, Karlak! Mm, stinky! You need to stay behind and camp for now? No. <laughs> no. Let me look at some stuff. We got this guy down here. Hold on, I'm curious about this. Okay, so Carlac approved of anti ethyl's stuff, what we said. And now she's at 40. So she, it only went up by one. Astorian disapproved and then approved again. So he... I don't know what he was at. And Gale is at 49 now. Gale is super, super high. We can probably get Gale the hell out of the party. Because at this point, I think he's the highest that we have now. He's really approving of these artifacts. What now? Should we just go a little farther and see what the hell's going on here? Or I'm thinking that we save it 
for next episode. I think that's the best call because this could be a Stop. whole Please. ordeal and I want to get Please. it all in the... We got a standing mirror here. Oh, this is going to be cool. I can't wait. I'm going to think about... Let's go back to camp, though. We can't. Long rest. What if we leave, though? Let me go back down, though. Hold on, one more time. No. And see if something may have happened to that guy. I just want to make sure that he's still down here. Stop. Please. Okay, so this person's still there. Let's go out. I'm gonna go back to camp. I'm not long resting. I'm not long resting until after Ethel. Or stuff. But let's go back to camp. I just want to see if anything goes on at camp. Because I might want to get Gale out of the party too. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like anyone has anything. Karlak? Copper for your thoughts. Oh, we're not. These look at Ari's outfit. Everything. It looks good. We can take Gale in there because I want to do the necromancer stuff too. And Gale was. I was hoping you'd come to chat. He was the main reason. What do you need? We really wrecked there. We can get rid of a Starian and try Will. And we also got a Lazale. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I kind of think we should get rid of a Starian. It's better you wait. Let's wait to camp. Uh, darling, I'm hurt. I th uh, it sounds. Can we look at the crew that's not in the party now? I kind of want to get Gale and Will. I mean, we got Shadowheart here. Can we get Shadowheart in for this? Heels might be helpful down there. Fighting Ethel. That was Starry and probably just stay with the same crew. We'll think about it next episode, but for now, let's just get we'll just get a Starry and back in for now. You need something? We'll get a Starry and back in for now because I'm not sure how I want to play it out. Let me talk to Lizelle, see if anybody Speak. else has anything. I'm ending our filling now. So nobody probably has anything, which is fine. Well met. Nothing. Nobody. Ha I was just thinking that they might have something to say after the whole. Go ahead. Oh, I'm listening. Vampire stuff. Nope. Okay, let's head back in to. Let me save because we tried to do the a party and then this pop a reload just to make sure everything's good. Just in case it banter, triggers banter again. Next episode we're gonna deal with Ethel and everything. Mistress of the Night, let's send this back to camp because we read it. Simple poison recipe. We already read this one too. The rule of three, I remember that. We'll send that to camp. Letter from M. This letter from M. This letter begins in an elegant hand, but soon descends into a furious scroll. We gotta find out who this M person is. Toad? Teapot? Incredibly lifelike? Down to the last wart? What? This is what a crate that we got. Over there. <laughs> the fuck do we got a wooden crate for? Let me read another book here. Let's just read something. Missives of Candle Keep. A select collection of the most notable letters sent from Candle Keep. Many are dry reports of celestial movements or incomprehensible details of arcane rituals. However, this letter catches your eye. To the sage Elemister, over the past year, I've delivered many of your letters to Master Gurian. So I wanted to be the one to deliver this sad news. At last, he is with us no more. Gorian and his ward left Candlekeep soon after your last letter to him arrived. They departed in the middle of the night, but were waylaid shortly after on the road to Baragos. The Gate Warden tells me that Gorian saw to it that several of his attackers joined him in the next world, 
before he was struck down. I hope this brings you the same grim comfort it brings me. Of his ward, there was no sign. In some better news, I received your letter to the library and was able to find much of the material you requested. It has been carefully secured and will travel with this letter. Yours in honor, Tristan P. Shale, librarian at Candle Keep. Yes. I hope you'll forgive my curiosity, but might I ask, why do you need so much information about ball spawn? What exactly are you working on? Ball spawn? There it goes again about the ball spawn. So this ball was demon, devil, god, something. And they from what the this the ball spawn books, it's almost like they are descendants of this devil. And I'm just gonna say devil because I don't know what this ball is. It sounds like a devil, god, demon. It's one of the one of these such. And these descendants of them are crazy. Like they're just from what we read in that book, they were uh, having a lot of people shook, basically. A lot of people were writing about these ball spawns, their encounters with these ball spawns, and it wasn't pretty sightings. <laughs> Let's just say. And now we have more on this ball spawn. So it's like they're descendants of this ball. And they're all Crazy. Misses of Candlekeep. Let's send that one back to camp. That was pretty interesting. Anything else? Like a short one? Journey through the jungle. The adventures of Baron von Baron and his goblin guide, Jaw. As they brave the thick jungles of Chult. The sun had just fallen below the horizon when I first heard its call. A thousand reed pipes at once, whistling a single beautiful, terrible song. A Lou Talano, said Joel. It's coming. Joel dropped her pack and scurried up the nearest biter. With a bit more effort, I climbed a tree of my own, and the two of us surveyed the grassy ground beneath. Ah, uh, woo! There it is again, above and beneath and all around. So close, my skull vibrated from the sound. The ferns and foliage under me rippled and swayed. Joa held a finger to her lips and demanded my silence. And in one motion, it snatched her. A vine? A tentacle? It hardly mattered. The hunter had found its prey. Joa's scream swelled and then faded as a loot alone dragged her away. That's the word. Probably not. <laughs> I leapt down to give chase, but the creature left no mark behind. The grasses were untrampled, the scrubs unbroken. I had only the memory of that herring call to guide me. Shit. What the hell? The jungle just swallowed him whole. Swallowed her whole, basically. Well, there we go. There's some books. There's something. It's going to take us about 20 years to read all these books in this game, but we're going to damn well give it hell and try our best. But anyways, my friends, next episode. Damn, I really want to get the Ethel again. <laughs> There's so much stuff in this game, and I love it. Well, we're making our way to Ethel. Next episode, though, we'll definitely get to Ethel. And get some resolution on what the hell is going on here. Save Marina. Auntie Ethel waved her hand, and Marina vanished. What happened to her? Auntie Ethel, the green hag, disappeared to the fireplace. If we follow her, perhaps we'll find Marina. The fireplace revealed a hidden passage under Ethel's home leading to a dark, twisted lair. Oh, we're gonna have to do a dungeon next episode, friends. The Wizard of Waterdeep. Gale's condition becomes unstable. He needs a powerful magical item in order to consume weave inside. Got it. We gave Gale a potent magic item. That's probably the first one. Gale's condition has worsened again. He requires us to give him another magical item in order to absorb the weave inside. We gave Gale another magical item, but this time, the weave inside wasn't quite as effective at stabilizing his condition. He seems only mildly concerned about that. For now, we should keep looking for any suitable items for the next time he calls on us. And then the Pale Elf. We told Asterion that he couldn't feed on innocence while well, we read that. Asturian told us that he suspects the monster hunter is serving his master, Kazador. We learned that Asturian was murdered by a Gur nomad long ago. 
the vampire lord Kazdor came to his aid and made him a vampire spawn. So if he was murdered and Kazador Okay, it's Satan here that Astorian was murdered and he said that. But the Kazador bit him when he was dead and it brought him back as a vampire. So you to me, you would think that the person would have to be alive to be turned into a vampire, right? I mean, you're basically dead anyway as a vampire. But can a, I guess it, it's stating here that a vampire can basically go up to corpses and just turn him into a vampire? Was murdered? But maybe, just maybe, he was murdered, going to die, and he was on his dying breath, and this is when Cazador bit him, was like, okay, I can turn you into a vampire, which will save you, but ultimately, you're going to be bound to me. That's what happened. He probably stated that, but just a lot going on. Crazy, but next episode, we are definitely getting to Ethel, and we're going to resolve what the hell's going on here with Marina. We got that chest out there. It looked like a... A tomb something like a a casket that's the word for it, it look like a casket out there that holds somebody in it that's you know bind up or that the arcane barrier on it and then we have things going on with the companions I'd imagine that if we long rested when we next long rest we're probably gonna get more story arcs because some stuff is moving forward with Astarian and Gale now for sure to be fair, everyone's moving forward besides Karlak. Karlak hasn't really had much besides going to Danon and then getting the, the, the medal that we gave her. But after that, she hasn't really had anything yet. But maybe some long rests might resolve some or jump forward some more of these stories. I could imagine. But anyways, my friends, I'm out of here. Have a good one. Stay safe. See you next time. Take care.